and we test the elongation of West system in a, a very, very expensive tensiometer that, that puts a coupon much smaller than this under load in, in, in between two jaws, and it tries to pull it apart, and it records on a graph the amount it's elongating, and then it records the, the point at which it fails. And the elongation on West system is around about 4%. The elongation on G-Flex is 30%. <laughs> Yet it has all the adhesive qualities of a really, really good epoxy. It's quite a, it's a very, very highly developed product that um, Goujon Brothers in the States just developed and didn't even bother figuring out whether there was a market for it. So consequently, it's not a massive seller in the chandlery shops. And this is no way, in no way a, a commercial plug. But... It would have been nice to have seen the results of keeping the committee back, because you remember we, we gunned a load of that, didn't yeah, we, we did. into, the, yep. into the plywood. This works really well on wet, wet woods as well, and it would have been nice to have seen whether that would have affected a short-term fix, you know, because I think it, it was possibly the best alternative. You know. But I'm thinking that this product would be very, very good for getting a very good, strong, adhesive, flexible joint around the, the, the junction of where the keel goes into the hull. So in other words, this point where a lot of you have seen that, that area cracking, and particularly the forward edge of the yeah. keel, where it's very thin and there's not much fixing there, you know, maybe if you can rake out some of the dead material that's already in there and kill the rust, maybe this is a good, a good solution. The nice thing is it comes in two forms. It comes in a resin and hardener form, very similar to the viscosity of, of West System that's pourable or just about brushable. It's, it's about the consistency of thick honey. And would you believe I forgot to bring that one with me tonight, but I did bring the, uh, the thickened version of it, which comes in a little kit like this, um, available at your local shop <laughs> for £23.82 plus VAT. Um, it's quite... It's not exactly cheap, but it's I, what I call reassuringly expensive. <laughs> <laughs> it, comes in, um, it comes with a neat little, uh, you know, neat, neat kit. So it's like really like two large tubes of that well-known um, epoxy product available at B&Q, Araldite. It comes with a, a, an instruction thing, which you can use as a squeegee if you want to. <laughs> two fantastic mixing sticks. <coughs> And again, some nice um, gloves. Talking about gloves, uh, we made a big thing about removing latex gloves from our product range because latex can cause a lot of uh, uh, serious... Um, uh, you can actually have anaphylactic shock at its worst with latex. Um, so we've always used nitrile gloves now. These are The blue ones are, uh, are the ones that come from the UK. These are the US versions. And this is a really, really neat kit that even gives you a little mixing palette to mix on. And the two uh, tubes of resin and hardener. They've got like a toothpaste top that you pierce. And they're coloured so you don't put them back on the wrong one. And you simply... Simply squeeze two beads of this out. Two even beads. And then mix it together. This works surprisingly well on plastics, on, on polypropylene plastics. And if you look on the internet, there's a crazy video suddenly chopping a polyethylene kayak in half with a chainsaw and then gluing it back together with this. And they throw it off a bridge and throw it off the back of a truck and, um, and it, uh, it stays in one piece. But you spend a bit of time blending the two together. This is one you recommended for the beavers, wasn't it? That you yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I guess also works with Picos, guys. Yeah, and, 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 uh, and toppers really as well. Top. Picos for kids. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, quite. Cool. I think... You've got an awful lot of the club. 
Yeah, I think a actually an even better thing with that is to have a spare piece of polyethylene yeah, that you can sure. use like a puncture repair kit yeah, yeah. and just glue a patch <laughs> over something, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did, it, did he ever use it? Or? I haven't. Yeah, no, yeah. We didn't, yeah. We didn't, didn't have a breakage. Ding anything. We didn't yeah. have a breakage. We yeah. didn't have a breakage. Yeah. The warranty getting out. But, yeah. So, which is a shame, really. <laughs> 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 I quite enjoy it. We'll look at it, same man. I really did want to run an advert with Yachts and Yachting a, a while back called Ding of the Month. You know, <laughs> somebody, somebody smashing something and then repairing it. You know. Never got off the ground. But you can see you've got um, quite a nice viscosity. It's, it's actually not completely thick as a tropic. It, it, it is a little bit runny. So what you can do with this is add a little bit of colloidal silica, which is another one of our fillers, and then you could get it into a, an upside-down fillet, which is what I'm potentially suggesting for the sand hopper keel. I don't need to do it, because I spent a lot of time uh, <coughs> sorting my keel out, you know, but it, it, I'd, I'd invite anybody to, uh, to give it a go. Um, so that's G-Flex. <laughs> Yeah. To be used as a filler? It's a, it really is a, a standalone adhesive. Standalone adhesive. Standalone adhesive. So um, if, you can, if you can thicken this up very slightly and gun it into the, you know, use a plastic bag to pipe it into that join in between the keel and the hull, um, then you're using an adhesive which has got fantastic adhesive powers. It's got like a steel-to-steel -steel, um, uh, bond, a, a lap shear bond, if you understand the strength of, of 20 MPA. That's massive, you know, for an ad adhesive. Um, so you, you're using it like a, a sealant, and it's elastic, not quite as elastic as a sealant, but it's got phenomenal adhesive powers, and that's why potentially, I, I think, there's a use for it in... In in, but what would it normally be used for? What well, be specialist adhesive application. Timber boat builders love using this with oak because oak is very, very, it's got a lot of energy in it. But at the boat show, I had three inquiries from people who had sourced this material because they'd read on a blog that it's very good for, for sealing the keel on a conventionally th through bolted keel arrangement where they were raking out all the sealant and then replacing it with this. And I recommended either putting it into a syringe and applying it or, um, or using a piping bag to get it in. Of course, you've got a big advantage there in that it's going in, in against a horizontal surface, so you wouldn't need to thicken it up. No. But on the sand upper kill, you'd almost certainly need to Turn thicken it up. Turn the sand upper upside down. Turn it upside down, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Build one of those Morris Minor jigs you know, to turn it over. Does it sand, do you? Uh, it's funny when you sand it because it tends to kind of because it's tough. The sand, the sanding dust is like balls of dust. You can sand it. You can even add it to West System to toughen West System. I mean, we we really the way it's made in the States is really strange. They make it in some kind of reactor. It's almost like Star Trek, and it's a very very highly developed product. Nobody else has got anything like this um, on the epoxy market. Um, and, and I think we've, we've been selling it now, or we've had it in the UK for about three, maybe four years. And we're really only just starting to get more sales because people have found a use for it. You know, in the States, they developed it with, with the intention of it being used for aluminium um, boats. You know, these aluminium riveted fishing boats, the, like the... Um, the Oh, yeah, yeah, that kind of thing, you know. Yeah, the, there's yeah. hundreds of them, uh, thousands of them yeah, made in. Yeah, 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 and they're just riveted together. So they develop this to 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 have uh, a means of sealing them. And the way they do that is to again clean out the the, the seams with a hacksaw blade, and then run a, a hot air gun over the aluminium to get it really hot, and then just pop this in. And the heat of the aluminium just lowers the viscosity and it runs into the seam and it, it 
makes an effective seal. But it not only is like a sealant, it has to have really good adhesive powers, and that's where it's... But that's a small market. There's, there's no market like that in, in the UK. What about Lotus stick aluminium together? Don't they? Yeah, they, they do that with tape, strangely enough. They do it with sticky tape. It's done with pressure-sensitive tape, you know. I mean, the, the whole technology of adhesives over the last 10 years has just accelerated, you know. The early adhesives in World War II were, were pretty basic chemistry, but now this, you know, every, everybody wants to glue everything together. You know? Modern yeah. boat building, everything, all the French-built boats revolve around mouldings that are glued in place rather than traditional English-built boats have always been bulkers that have been bonded in place and then the furniture is secondary to that. Whereas French boats, they all rely on the furniture to create stiffness in the hull. Talking about production boats, this, this is a piece of polyester that I made earlier on and I'm not so sure that that will bend very far before it breaks, but it's not very well cured. Yeah, it's quite bendy, but it's not. You can see there, it's not very well cured. But you, you can see that there's um, there's quite a difference between G Flex. That's really quite quite with elastic. The, with the polyester as opposed to G Flex, yeah. see, um, the UV makes it a lot more brittle uh, and everything over the years. Do you get the same sort of, or have you got any evidence of how that's affected on G Flex? Uh, well, on, on all epoxies, they're not UV stable, so they, they yellow quite strongly yeah. over a, a period yeah, sure. of time. Um, with, uh, with polyester, talking about the elongation, the elongation on polyester is only 2%. Yeah, yeah. And so it, that's why you get star crazes on, yeah, on sure. a polyester boat. Um, that's not really a very good example. I was hoping that no, this would break. Yeah. I only did this this morning, so you can actually feel it's still a little bit soft. It's not yeah, fully sure. cured. But... Um, I'm hoping that that, I mean, this is, you know, making strips of things and bending and breaking things is a really good, <laughs> simple way of, uh, yeah. you know, uh, you know any, any boat builder ought to be breaking things to test things rather than sending them to, to science, you know. How many of those packs do you reckon would take to fill a Well, strangely enough, we do this in a kilo pack as well. <laughs> 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 yeah, so I, I actually think that... Uh, Probably one of these packs per side would do it. You, you saw how far that small mix of epoxy went. Well, this does go quite a long way. Um, but I would suggest that thickening it up is, is the way to go because you can see here, this is going to run, yeah. you know, that's going to run down your keel. Yeah. So when it comes to um, filling and fairing something like a keel or any underwater um, appendage on your boat. I, I can't remember what the... Um, I did once work out what the keels, the three keels, and the rudder represented as a percentage of the overall wetted surface area. It's quite high, surprisingly high, you know. So, you know, you spend all your time making sure your anti is nice and smooth. But if you've got like um, little dings and um, imperfections in the keels, then it would just upset the, the, the hydrodynamics, it would upset the flow of water. So what I did with my keel was I had my keel shot blasted over at Rice and Coles. Well, obviously, you know, I think we've had shot blasters in the dinghy park before, but it's a bit messy, to say the least. And the trouble is, working outside, the more severe you blast a casting and the brighter it becomes, the quicker it will oxidise. So to do that in the dinghy pot, you've got to blast it, brush all the dust off, get a coat of epoxy on as quickly as you can, and the keel will be nice and cold, so it'll take ages for it to take off. What I did was I put some infrared, I had my boat over at Rice and Coles, I put some infrared lamps on the keel, so it got really hot. Then I had it blasted, then whipped it straight back into the shed and got the infrared lamps back on it and managed to coat it before it got any oxidising on the keel. And what I did was to roll a coat of West System on there, 
leave it to get the stickiest masking tape, then rolled another coat on, left that to get the stickiest masking tape, and then I screeded the whole keel with the low density filler mixed up to peanut butter. And by doing that, you get no blush on the filler. Left it all to cure, came back the next day and sanded it up fair. And I spot filled it in several areas. I made sure that the, if you look at the trailing edge on my keel, it's very nice and square. And, you know, a lot of the keels, because they're, they're, um, they're castings that are, you know, not the best, then you might find the trailing edge isn't quite so square. And you do need a nice square trailing edge to be really, really efficient. I did all that, and then I, I, um, I put as many coats of Western system as I could think of on the surface of that. I did the first coat just with the West system resin and hard mix. I think I put four coats over that mixed with something that we call copper compound. It's, a, it's an additive that we have that's cuprous oxide. And when you brush it on, it looks like um, red oxide primer. But it goes on nice and thick, and it has a certain element of antifouling properties. And uh, once I got that on, I sanded it up a little bit fair again. It was nice and fair. All I did was I just brushed the coating down that way, so all the drips ended up on the base of the keel. And then I just sanded all the drips off when it cured. That was the easiest way to do it, rather than get any runs on the keel. I just kept brushing it down like that, because the copper makes it very heavy. And that seems to have lasted quite a long time. Um, in fact, I think uh, probably next year I'll do the, the base of the keel. But I noticed as a lot of the boats were coming out, so I sat on the sea wall, a lot of the bottom of the keels are all quite rough. Mm. I remember, um, I remember uh, uh, Tony's not here, is he? <laughs> So Will's old boat had a great big hollow, you know, <laughs> like almost the size of half a rugby ball in it, where it had gone, it had lain on something, or maybe the keel for that wasn't uh, a brilliant keel from the foundry, and it had a bit of filler in it, you know. So I filled that with some silica, actually, West System mixed with silica, and that was still on, you know, that was still on there when it, when it came out. So I just thought, just to round this up, because... I can maybe sense that people's eyes are glazing over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just around, so I'll just show you a little top tip with fairing. Because again, we're going to use this low density filler. We're going to meter our resin and hardener out using the uh, calibrations which have disappeared <laughs> on this mixing pot. Blend the two together. David, you advised us when we did our keel, but the one thing I would emphasise was we did our keel in July when it was hot. Yes, yeah. No no point trying to do it in the boat park. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. We also, having done, as you said, with the, the box, uh, the keel box, yes. the holes in the top, Yes. we had the launcher, we lifted her up, filled it up, Dropped her off the ground, brought her up again two yeah. or three times. Yes. Just to get them up, if there yeah. wasn't movement in the keel to help that. Yeah. And again, yeah. I think that helped. Yes, yes. Um, yeah. And it's three years since, and we've got one yes. street coming down. Yeah, yeah. Well. yeah. But we didn't, you told us to rake it all out with the hacksaw blade. By the time we got to that stage, we didn't. Yes. But it, has, uh, it yeah. seems to have done the trick. Yeah. That's good to know. I think even on the very latest boats, have you got a tiny little bit on yours, Phil, of yeah. rust? Yeah. 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 Yeah, Paul's got a little bit. Yeah. You know, it's um, it all sounds ever so involved, doesn't it, doing all this work? But it's time well spent for the future. That's I've spent ages doing the bottom of my boat, and it's kind of paid dividends um, uh, for the future. Because I'm not out there, um, you know, anti in the bottom of it on a horrible day. So I'm going to add um, twice the volume here. It's probably quite a lot of this, actually. It's actually 
shield of it. This is quite easy to sand. Yeah. Medal for sanding yours. <laughs> Nobody gives you a medal for sanding. I think that was what Chris had his redundancy. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> We actually sell mixing pots. When you start using paper cups and things, you realise why. <laughs> Soup carvers. <laughs> Freshly. Now, this isn't. Because I haven't got enough filler. Oh, actually, I have got enough filler. I've got some more filler. But because I haven't got enough filler, you know, oh, that isn't quite brilliant. And you can see that it's not that good because it's quite glossy. That's another trick with this. If it's still glossy, it means there's quite a lot more resin to the amount of filler. So you just need a little bit more filler just to make it a little bit more stodgy. So we'll pretend that I've added a little bit more filler. Yeah. <laughs> and if you're going to fair your keel up, let's imagine that this piece of plywood is your keel. So the first thing to do is to get this on. And then you need to use a genuine West System plastic squeeze. <laughs> Available at your reputable local charnery shop. And you don't need just one of these, you need two of them. Because you, you work this just like a plaster would, 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 uh, would work uh, plaster. I would be going even faster, wouldn't <laughs> <laughs> So you, you smooth it on, and you'll find if you smooth it on and you take it off on another squeegee, that isn't quite mixed as well as I would want it. You can see some white flecks in there where the silica hasn't quite mixed. You do that fairly thinly on it. Yeah, you, you'd, you'd aim actually, that's very important, because if you trowel this all over and you overfilled it, all you're going to do is spend loads of time sanding it off. <laughs> so really, all you want to do, if you're thinking about how you, you know, the, art, the act of fairing something is making the rough surface smooth, so all you're trying to do is fill the low spots. Mm -hmm. So you can use a batten between the high spots to give you, you know, where the low spots are. So you're only trying to fill those. Yeah. And if you use... Um, you know, if you, you you can actually get a bit of a feel for it, to be honest, on something as small as a keel. But if you imagine a super yacht, right, would you believe that some aluminium super yachts have 20 tons of filler, 20, tw you know, 25,000 litres oh of filler? On a, on, a, on a really big, something, you know, something big built in aluminium. It's a good market to be in, isn't it, eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I go out to Italy quite a lot. <laughs> so you can see now you've got something really nice and smooth. And if you use this at a nice shallow angle, you can actually feather it out and do a lot of work for yourself whilst this is still liquid. That's the most important thing. Try and fair it up like a plaster of wood before it cures. Because as I say, nobody will give you five gold stars for sanding, however good you are. Yeah? <laughs> and although this is easier to sand, it's got about the same density as mahogany, so it's not as easy to sand as some of the other fillers. We've got another filler called microlite, which is very easy to sand, but it's quite soft. You get a fingernail impression in it. So it's not the ideal filler to use on a keel. Yeah? Right, so I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope I haven't...
board anybody to see. So I hope Brilliant. it's a bit of Not useful information there. I've just spent the best part of the week at the boat show, and I'm going back there tomorrow, so I'm, su- I'm surprising myself <laughs> that I'm still talking about this topic. <laughs> but, uh, it's always fun coming to do this uh, in front of my friends, you know, and, um, and I hope you've enjoyed it. But thanks ever so much. Thank you, David.